Hello, my name is Thule and I'm the Head of Photography here at Hills Road. My background is in graphic design and photography um, with a number of years experience in the commercial world. In this presentation, I'm going to talk through the structure of the A-level photography course and answer some of the frequently answered questions that we receive from students thinking about studying photography with us. So I'm going to talk about ways of working in the photography department. So we have a computer suite where every student has their own computer to work at. We have a photographic studio that can be used in the lesson and outside of the lesson. We have a fully functioning darkroom um, that can be used again in the lesson and outside the lesson and equipment that can be loaned. So part of the, the system that we have set up here is that we have a number of cameras and lenses and tripods, flash guns, um, all kinds of different things, uh, close up filters, uh, remote control, control, remotes to work your cameras, all kinds of things that can help you um, with your study on the course. We do predominantly, we do a lot of group work um, in the photography department in the first part um, of the autumn term. So you'd be working alongside lots of other students and doing things like peer review, group discussions, helping each other with your projects, helping each other with ideas, talking through what you're doing with your project work, um, helping each other in the studio, helping each other in the dark room. Um, we really do consider our department to be a creative hub so very friendly and very supportive where no question is a stupid question. So quite often I get asked on the photography course um, at open evening whether um, you have to have studied art to be able to study photography. You don't need to be able to, to have study art to be able to study photography, but we are keen for you to have a real passion for the subject and be someone that takes photographs um, you know, and looks and sees and looks at the world around you so that you're always thinking about how you might work in that kind of creative visual language. So you'd need a great GCSE grade six in photography or in art or a similar subject title or GCSE grade six in English language and literature. So you've got quite a few choices to help underpin your application to the photography course. In the autumn term, it's all about skill building. We have an induction program that runs through everything that you need to know to be able to get started with photography. We don't make any assumptions about any previous knowledge. Not everyone has studied art, not everyone has studied photography, um, not everyone knows how to work on a project, not everyone knows how to use a camera. So we assume that we, we're getting you started right from the very beginning. So through the sessions, we will look at how to use your camera, how to, um, process film in the darkroom, how to make prints in the darkroom, how to work in the studio, how to use the lights, how to work on a project, how to lay out your, your PowerPoint presentation slides, how to analyse images, what language you would use with that analysis. Everything is built into that induction programme. Um, and it also includes um, location visits and thinking about project management, you know, you'd be working on projects for quite a long period of time. How do you manage that around everything else that you do? And um, thinking about visual studies lessons and digital lessons to help you learn about more about photographers, show you lots of new photographers and artists that could help you with your work and show you how to work with Adobe Photoshop to uh, edit your images in post production. So one of the things that's really important, um, a really key word that we use a lot in the photography department is enjoyment. Enjoyment of new experiences, building on skills that you enjoy and working on projects that you feel really inspired by as you will enjoy them more. So it's all about enjoyment. If you choose the right project, then it should be really enjoyable. If you don't choose the right project, then we'll get you back on track to a project that you are really interested in and that you look forward to working on and that you enjoy because it's a really, really important part of working on a creative project. And it leads to another frequently answered question, which is, do, uh, do I have to try everything and can I do what I want? We do encourage you to try everything um, on the course. So we'll encourage everybody to go out and shoot a 35 mil black and white film and process it and print it in the dark room. We'll encourage everybody to go and work in the studio. We'll encourage everybody to use post-production techniques with their projects. Um, but once you've been shown those induction sessions, you can decide whether that's relevant to your project or not. 
So uh, it might it might work for you, or you might decide that actually having tried chemical photography, you actually just really enjoy working with digital. Or maybe you've really enjoyed uh, chemical photography and your whole project becomes based around chemical photography rather than any digital work. And that leads on to the next question, which is, can I do what I want? Yes, absolutely, you can do what you want. You have, um, you'll be given a number of uh, starting themes to work from with your project work and it's up to you how you take that and whatever direction you take it in. The question I will always ask you and continue to ask you all the way through the two years of the course is what are you doing and why are you doing it? Because if you can answer those questions, then you're really clear about what you're doing. You've got a really clear intention behind your project work and it will just make the whole process much, much easier. Easier is another key word that we talk about a lot and uh, much more enjoyable and it will help you stay motivated. So a key strength of the department is the support given to students to enable them to develop exciting, exploratory, personal responses to the world around them. And we think of this process as a journey. So we've got some examples of our students work that we hope uh, show a kind of true picture of the skilled diverse practices undertaken by our students on the photography course and more of that work can be seen at hillsart.net and I'll come on to that slide in a moment. And I'm just going to talk about a number of images to start with. So these are projects, um, these are year two projects by students who came onto the course without any previous knowledge or experience of photography and it's quite amazing what they're able to achieve in that time frame. So Gabby did uh, based her project on graphic art posters exploring architecture um, and Beth, Beth looked at, uh, her title was Things That We See In The Dark, so you can see the image of the chair with the feet that are actual feet, and she produced a whole series of surreal images exploring kind of fears and phobias and nightmares and things not being quite what they seem. Alice really enjoyed working with portraiture and she worked with a medium format uh, camera, Bronica, medium format film and produced a series of black and white prints exploring the idea of a still point in a turning world. Eve was really interested in uh, portraiture as well and she decided to um, photograph fellow classmates in the studio uh, looking at the body in motion. So you'll probably find at some point on the course you'll end up um, being asked to be a model. It's part, of, it's part of the course of being on the photography course. So Emma was interested in quite, she was an art student and she was interested in quite abstract images exploring colour and shape and pattern and she produced a series of images called In Water. So hopefully you can see from the selection that I've shown you that we have quite a mix of things being explored on the course of digital, chemical, still images, sequences, moving images, mixed media um, and the, the word that we use and it comes from um, the exam board is thinking about appropriate, the selection of appropriate kind of resources and materials and mediums so that you're thinking about, you know, what would work for your project, what's appropriate for your project. So there's no need to show that you, you know, that you don't need to do everything to be able to do that. You just need to select um, what's really going to make your work really, really effective. There's a big emphasis on supporting exploratory personal responses to the world around you. And that's done through research into inspirational, contemporary, modern and traditional ideas and techniques. And all of those things will happen in the classroom and you'll be encouraged to extend that into your independent learning time outside of the classroom. So in the February of the first of year one, so once you've completed your induction sessions, um, in February of year one, the students start something called unit one. And unit one is part of your final assessment. So it's 60% of your final grade. And it's built up in a number of phases, each with a clear structure and frequent assessment points to review and reflect upon progress. Um, and this is all done with your teacher. So you'll get lots of opportunity for feedback. And alongside that, we'll also do quite a number of peer review sessions so that you learn that you can actually help and support each other and you can gain quite a lot of knowledge from the person who sits, sits next to you in the classroom or maybe the person who sits on the opposite side of the classroom. So I'll encourage you to work with lots of different people 
in lots of different group dynamics and setups so that you can get the most out of everybody's expertise in what we call our creative hub. Once you complete that project, um, you'll work on something called Unit 2. And Unit 2 is a response to an externally set assignment set by Edexcel. And it typically results in a period of nine weeks of preparatory work and is concluded in a 15 hour practical exam sat over three days. So you'll have um, time to work on your project before you sit. Probably what would be the closest thing that you'll sit to is in an exam in photography, but it's not an exam because your teachers will mark it and the exam board will check or moderate the marks. So all practical projects are supported by thorough research, as I said, into inspirational figures from contemporary, modern and earlier um, art movements. And as part of the unit one um, project, you're required to produce something, a sustained written assignment related to your practical work of 2000 to 3000 words to deepen your critical and contextual knowledge and understanding. And you'll be guided through this right from the start. So there's lots of support and structure in place to help you know how to how to write and what to write. Um, and this personal study will run alongside your um, practical work. So they're integrated with each other. So the UK's creative industries contributes to almost 13 million to the UK economy every hour. So the UK creative industries are an important and vital part of our, our industry setup. And each year, many of our photography students progress onto very exciting creative pathways, gaining places at leading universities for art foundation and undergraduate degree courses. And it's important to remember that all HE groups can be supported by photography and that we have students in the department going on to study every subject imaginable within science, engineering, humanities and languages. Studying photography at A-level is respected for the skills developed in observation, perception, analysis, creative problem solving, working with others, project management and vitally the confidence to express your own personal meaningful ideas about the world in which we live. The strong emphasis on getting to know our students as individuals and recognising their aspirations and ambitions means that the dialogue supporting them in preparation, in preparing applications and portfolios is well established, particularly deeper in year one and in the autumn term of year two. Further to this, we have set up a Creative Futures team and all, that all students are members of this provides an online space for staff to share resources, to explore career options, as well as for students to share their own research into architecture, fine art, photography, graphics, illustration and textiles and fashion. And each year workshops on interview portfolio preparation are run for artists and photographers. So progressing into successful creative career areas is a popular choice for our students. They are supported in preparing successful applications and interview portfolios for art foundation courses, as well as prestigious undergraduate degree courses um, from London to Edinburgh. So part of the thing that we do on our course is that we provide study trips. Um, we provide local trips, to, including the Botanic Garden, um, for the photographers to learn about camera techniques, we have an art department um, Tate Modern trip to London, which is a gallery visit. So the art students and the photography students go. There's an amazing opportunity to go and see some first-hand, have some first-hand encounters with world-leading examples of arts and locations. We run a foreign trip to Venice in the second year of the photography course, which is an excellent opportunity just to immerse yourself in photography. Um, and as uh, amazing. It's an amazing place to go to. It provides uh, a wide range of subject matter from portrait studies, street photography, architecture, water, abstract, uh, so absolutely wide range of resources and subject matter available to you in the, the lovely place that is Venice. And another benefit of being um, a, a student of uh, Hills Road is that the uh, Botanic Garden, because we, we are so, we're based so close to the Botanic Garden, they offer our, photo our photography and art and geography and biology students 
a botanic garden pass which allows them to go and use the botanic garden uh, as many times as they want during the academic periods. It's a fantastic um, thing to have available to you. So as well as running the A-level photography course, we also have uh, a number of enrichment opportunities. So we run a chemical photography enrichment course and we run a uh, digital photography enrichment course. So there's an opportunity to learn more about cameras and actually photography students can take part in either of these enrichment opportunities to, to help support their A-level course even further. So there'll be an opportunity to learn how cameras work, to work in the darkroom to make prints, to go down to the botanic garden and learn how to work with aperture and shutter speed, to get the opportunity to work in our photographic studio. So we have a huge online show of the best work of uh, 2020 and 2021. So we've got digital outcomes and films on there as well. And we've also got students talking about uh, their experiences on the course. So if you want to go and have a look and see, we go and look and listen to what they've got to say about studying art and photography at Hills Road. It's an excellent opportunity to go and have a look at the hillsart.net site. So student performance, we are proud of our students and the hard work and commitment they put into achieving these results. We believe that every student has the ability to achieve their potential and we work hard to help them get the results that they need to progress to their chosen destinations. So we get students moving on to all kinds of different courses from photography. So we've got photography, we've got fashion management, we've got creative advertising, fashion Atelier, if that's how you pronounce it, ocean exploration, surveying, theatre and performance and enterprise, professional dance and musical theatre, geography and so much more. Photography is one of those courses where you not only learn how to become a better photographer and how to translate things that are personal and important and meaningful to you in your life in through a visual medium, but you also learn some really important life skills. So you learn how to work with others, how to work independently, how to problem solve, how to project manage long term projects, um, how to research effectively, how to put all of that down into a project and present it in a way that's interesting and engaging for other people to look at. You'll build your confidence in all of these areas studying on the A-level photography course and we look forward to welcoming you soon.